Let me see, I was in Montreal for the first time from 1967. And uh, I, it was getting towards the 70s. And um, at that time, there was a certain kind of atmosphere existing in Montreal, um, which, uh, which blew up, in a sense, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the affair with the Sir George Williams University um, computer affair, where the black students revolted as a result of certain kind of inequities and injustices they thought they were experiencing. One of the reasons for this was, I mean, and it's likely that it's all over the place for people wherever there's some, some form of oppression taking place, is that people were voiceless and uh, they were suffering uh, in silence um, under the, the yoke of a certain kind of injustice and attitude, prejudices and racialism and things like that, which existed. And, and eventually it was going to sort of express itself in some form or the other. Now, the, there was no uh, forum for that kind of expression in terms of theatre. Uh, one could imagine uh, theatre giving, giving a sort of expression to certain kinds of things like that, which would not therefore result in the kind of explosion that took place in Montreal at that time. So the Centaur Theatre did uh, the great white computer written by Peter Deborah and directed by John Giuliani, and it was based on that computer incident on that uh, explosion which took place at the university. Uh, the, the first performance, I was, I, was, I was involved in the performance, I was acting in it. And um, the first, uh, the first, at the opening night, as a matter of fact, it was, the performance was disrupted. As soon as the play started, it was disrupted by members uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the black community who were, who were involved in the incident and, uh, and thought that it was, uh, it was not a good thing to have it being presented to the public in the form of a play because the court case was still going on for many of the, um, many of the people who were involved. And uh, it was not so much a disruption as it was a very, very, as far as I'm concerned, legitimate uh, response to the putting on of a play about something which had recently happened and which was still very much in the air and in the legal courts. At this particular time, this kind of uh, incident uh, made it, made it uh, created an urgency for the existence of a theatre, uh, a legitimate theatre, theatre recognised by people and supported by people, not only by people, but by the Canada Council, by the Canadian government. So there was this guy called uh, Laurie Elliott. He was working at the university. I think he was an assistant lecturer or something. And he was, he was, he was writing plays. Black guy. I think he's from Trinidad originally. And uh, I think he used to be writing poetry as well. And this play came out. He gave this play to... Um, to uh, another Trinidadian who was living in Montreal at the time called Jeff Henry. Now, Jeff Henry used to work at the National Theatre School teaching movement. He was originally a dancer from Trinidad who came to, um, to Montreal, who, who immigrated to Canada. And uh, he, he was very much involved in the, um, in the initial stages of theatre wherever he went. Jeff approached the, the, the artistic director, I think his name was Maurice Podbury, at the Centaur Theatre and presented him with this project. Now, I don't know where the money came from, <laughs> but eventually we found ourselves as a group working at the Centaur Theatre producing this play. I suspect that the Centaur did sponsor the production and made it part of their season. So it was called How No Black Man by Laura Sellett. And that was one of the things, one of the productions which gave a certain kind of legitimacy to a group that was beginning to form itself into something uh, uh, viable in the community. There was an institution called the Black Studies Center, which existed long before the formation of the Black Theatre Workshop. And it was run by a very persistent gentleman. And I think to a large extent, he, I think he's still there now. And, uh, he, as in my impression, was the guy behind it all, that whenever things seemed to slip, seemed to slow down, he was always there with a certain kind of dynamism to push it, to, to give it that injection and get it going again. And his name is Clarence Beam. I always, I always saw him as the, as the kind of person who, no matter what stage of the experience was, whether it was the Black Studies Center, the, 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 um, the theatre group before it actually became the Black 
the Black Theatre Workshop, or the formation of the Black Theatre Workshop, and even keeping it going there. I think he was that driving force behind it. I think that as a result of all these things, one, uh, like uh, the theatre the theater giving a voice to people, the need for a voice, the, 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 the computer incident at uh, Concordia University, uh, creating a kind of urgency. Uh, people, people do need a voice here. There are a couple of productions, uh, both uh, done by, by Cento and directed by, uh, by, by John Giuliani, and then the production uh, of the Black Theatre Workshop, How No Black, Black, How no Black Man by Loris Elliott. A lot of these things, I think, were recognized by the Canada Council, the federal government. And uh, I think that is why they listened, they started listening to the requests of people in Montreal for the support in the formation of a black theater. I think that was what was happening. And that is when I think we got, we applied for and got a Canada Council grant, which was one of the big steps towards the formation of the theater.